In this video, we're going to walk through a post lab analysis of your high speed projectile motion uh, video lab. You're going to learn all of the things that you need to know to be able to write your lab report for this lab. Let's get started. Okay. Uh, the purpose was to determine the relationship between horizontal position with time and vertical position with time for a projectile. So this is a double lab where we are going to have a horizontal position with time graph and a vertical position with time graph. Okay, so in your analysis and then in your conclusion, you're going to analyze an X versus T graph and then a V versus, I'm sorry, Y vertical versus T graph. Okay, cool. Um, the independent variables for both of these relationships is time and the dependent variable is going to posi be position, either X or Y. Different things that we controlled, um, hopefully we were able to use a consistent uh, shooting velocity, um, the mass of the projectile uh, didn't change, right, because there was only one shot, uh, but also the different things that we did in the video analysis itself, like we had to set um, a length of one meter, and we needed to define our direction, right? It's like slash orient X and Y. So you'll want to talk about all the different things that we did to um, get the video into a, a place where we can actually analyze it using Logger Pro. Okay, so again, you're going to be doing a double analysis uh, in this lab. And here I have the analysis section from your grading rubric for the lab report. You're going to be doing 1 through 8 for X versus T, and then do it again for Y versus T. So make sure you do all of these things for X versus T and Y versus T. We're going to also do these things for uh, those two separate graphs. Okay, so here we have X versus T, the horizontal position versus time graph. So you're going to print this graph out with the line of best fit for your analysis section. And hopefully it's very easy for you to see that this is a linear relationship between position and time. The mathematical expression with my data is going to be X equals, and then we take a look at our slope, 1.76, I'll just do 1.76 meters per second, times T plus, now we look at the, the Y intercept. Do I add, negative point zero zero two three seven six meters okay well what we want to ask ourselves first is well is this a really small number <laughs> like it looks really small um, and how small does the number have to be before we ignore it remember that we like to use the five percent rule where if we have a uh, a y-intercept that is less than five percent of um, our largest y value, so we can write that like this, if b is less than 5% of y max, uh, then you can ignore it. So here I look at my maximum y value, it's about 0.8, uh, and if I multiply 0.8 by 0.05, to get 5% of that, I'm going to get uh, 0 0.04. Okay, so yes, our y-intercept is much less than 0 0.04, so we can ignore it, which means I'm not even going to include it in my mathematical expression, but in the conclusion, I will talk about this um, and, and why we decided to get rid of it. Now let's talk about the general equation. So generally speaking, um, we know that this slope is a velocity, but because it is specifically for horizontal motion, we're going to call that Vx, because it's a horizontal velocity, times t plus um, x not for initial position. Now, it makes sense that we basically had zero for our initial position, because that's where we started um, our first little dot in our video analysis. Okay, let's move on. Vertical position versus time. 
So for the vertical position versus time, um, hopefully you noticed that this was not linear, um, that in fact the y motion varies with the square of time, which sometimes we can write that with a little fishy, means y um, is you know related to t squared. Or if you want, you can just go ahead and call this a quadratic relationship because you know that t squared um, parabolic type of graphs, we call those quadratics. Okay, our mathematical expression is interesting because now we have a y equals a t squared plus b t plus c. So let's go through and talk specifically about what each of these things um, will look like in our mathematical expression for this projectile. y equals our a term is negative 4.92. I'm actually just going to leave it. Sorry, hold on. Equals negative 4.9. Uh, meters, that unit is going to be meters per second squared times t squared. Even though it's not included, I know that there's a t squared, which means there's a second squared, um, and I have to, I have to have a meters per second squared for my unit here, so that when I multiply it by second squared, I'm left with meters. Okay. So it doesn't say it in Logger Pro, but that is the unit for my a term of this quadratic. Okay, then the B term. The B term is, uh, for me, it was 1.083. So 1.083, we can round that to 1.1 meters per second times T. And again, it's being multiplied by a T, so it has to be meters per second, so that when I multiply it by a second, the second cancels out and leaves me with meters. Uh, and then my initial position. Okay, so here we do the 5% rule, and it's almost exactly the same. Um, in this case, our maximum y value is actually closer to, we would do like the absolute value of it, um, 0.5. So if I do 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 to get 5%, I'm going to get 0 0.025, which 0 0.002 is much smaller than, so I don't need to add anything. All right, now let's talk about our general equation. So y equals negative 4.9. Man, that's so familiar. It's almost like it's half of 9.8. It is half of 9.8. That's right. We would actually say that the a term in that quadratic is negative 1 half g, half of the acceleration due to gravity. Did I blow your mind? Maybe not. Who knows? Are you even watching this video? It's not an Ed puzzle. You have to actually, okay. Anyway, negative one half g t squared um, plus this guy right here. Well, the b term in a quadratic tells you about the initial steepness. And slope on a position versus time graph tells you velocity. That means this b term is telling you the initial velocity in the y direction. So we're going to call that v y naught. 1.1 meters per second is the initial y velocity. Oh, sorry. Times time. Now, we did not have a y-intercept in our mathematical expre expression, the specific one. But that's because we, we set our initial height to be 0. Well, we have a variable for initial height because it's not always zero, uh, <laughs> 0. It's not always 0. Uh, and it's y naught. So this is now our general equation for the vertical position versus time. Now again, remember your analysis, you're going to have this graph, the vertical position versus time, and also the horizontal position versus time graphs, doing a double analysis. Um, and you'll also go through each conclusion separately and go through all these different things. So the conclusion really is only different for 1 through 6 which means you only have to go through numbers 1 through 6 separately for x versus y and y versus t. You could do this like um, analysis for x versus t, y versus t, then conclusion for x versus y versus t and y versus t or whatever. Um, or if you want to do them like the analysis and the conclusion for x, then the analysis and co conclusion for y, that's totally fine with me. All right, let's talk about our new concepts. So this is probably the most important one. 
the horizontal and vertical motions don't affect each other. They had their own separate relationships with time, um, and, and they just didn't, didn't affect each other. We call this X and Y independence. Now, because they don't affect each other, we can use vectors, because vectors allow us to separate the X components from the Y components. Acceleration due to gravity only affects the vertical motion because gravity pulls things down. It doesn't pull them to the right. And we would say that our y acceleration is negative g. Horizontal velocity is constant. There's nothing pulling it to the right. That's why we had a linear position versus time graph. So we would say that our x acceleration is 0. Now, like freefall motion, we must assume for these relationships to exist for a projectile that air resistance, or, or drag, is what we also call that, um, is negligible, so we can ignore air resistance, and also that the projectile is falling near the surface of the Earth. Uh, if, as you get farther and farther and farther away from the surface of the Earth, then you have a, a kind of a different relationship, and if you shoot something so fast that it escapes Earth's, you know, like low gravity gets far away from the surface of the earth then it goes into orbit and we have to do an entire new framework of, of trying to solve the problem okay well that's it you did it congratulations we're done